What's up guys, Sean the Bro here, and in today's episode we're going to be going over some of the project settings in Unreal that will allow us to change things like the executable name, the project thumbnail, and all sorts of fun but important things like that. So this isn't tied to a specific series like my fighter, so I have my fighter open, but it doesn't matter what project you're doing this in, it will work for all Unreal Engine projects, Unreal Engine 4, or Unreal Engine 5. Quick note before we get into this episode, if you would like to check out the tutorial that you see on screen with all the mechanics of a fighting game that we have going on so far, you can click this link in the top right corner to go to the entire playlist of the fighting game tutorial series. For today's episode, let's go to our editor again, Unreal Engine 4, Unreal Engine 5, either will work, we'll go to Edit and Project Settings. When we are in here, the very first tab that opens up this project description section is what we're going to be covering today. There's quite a few things in here, and I'm going to go over all of them. So the first one is the project thumbnail. So let's go ahead and click the ellipsis there, the three dots to select an image on our machine. And we're going to put that in there. So it is the incorrect size. However, it actually still will work. It's just going to try and resize it for us when this thumbnail is required. For now, we're going to leave it though. So this is our project thumbnail. I'll go over this a little bit more when we can actually visualize this. The description, the project description text, it's very vague what this is. This is the description that will appear in the executables description if you go to the properties on it. So you can see I'm at the keyword thumbs up PNG right here. I can right click on this and I can hit properties. And if I go to the details, tab here you can see there's all sorts of data in here so the description is going to appear in that section there for executable so it doesn't have to be super advanced or really anything even important you could leave it blank however i do like to fill this out when creating projects just in case anyone is going through the files so i just like to put something simple like fighting game template that should do the trick now we have the project ID. Now this is an automatically generated ID, and this ID is for your project. If you put it up on the marketplace, it will be associated by this ID. You can always generate a new one and everything will work fine. You'll have to update it on the marketplace when you do this, if you push updates to it, but no one can steal your ID and then you're not able to work on your project anymore or anything like that. Now we have the project name. You may notice that some projects actually get created and it is called one thing when you actually speak about it. So say it was called the fighting game template. However, when you look at the executable, it might be called the UE4 fighter. That is why the project name can be different from the actual name of the game. So whatever we put in here is what's gonna be displayed. So I'm gonna say this is the UE4 fighter specifically. It works in UE4 and UE5, but this build will be the UE4 fighter. So we'll go ahead and put that as the project name. Then you have the project version. Project versions are handled many different ways by many different people. So you can come up with your method of handling the version. It is entirely up to you. However, really what this means is this is the version that we are on. As you make updates to it, you should increase this value. For example, say I fix a bug and I wanna push an update to my project. I may update the version to 1.0.0.1 or what I always do for projects that I'm working on is I use three numbers and I have a major, a minor, and then bugs or something like that. So basically, if I'm on version 1.0.0, I just release the project. And you can actually do even like 0.0.1 if I want to say it's not released yet or 0.10. That's also acceptable, but I might do 1.0.0 when it's released and then say I fix a bug 1.0.1 and say I overhaul a system, I could do 1.1.0. Say I come out with a whole new season with online multiplayer, I might want to come out with version 2.0, something like that. So you can make this whatever you want. We can also use this project version in our widgets, grab that value and display it. So we'll leave that at 1.0.0. Now for the publisher, I don't have a publisher right now, but all this data is important to fill in, in my opinion. It is good for data tracking, but it also does appear in a few places. So if players are looking at this data, they can see the company name of the publisher, the company distinguished name of the publisher, the homepage, and the support contact. So the company name is pretty simple. Let's say we had Sean the Bro. Let's just leave it at Sean the Bro. 
However, the company distinguished name would be something like Sean the Bro LLC. The formal name with all the extra steps like corporation or industry or something like that. Now the home page is typically used as a link to the site. So I don't have anything like that right now, but I can put in my YouTube account. The support contact is meant to be a way to actually contact this publisher. The user bought something and they didn't receive what they purchased. They have to contact support. So in my case, I would put my email, which I always offer this one to everyone interested if they have any questions. So I can put seanthebrowoutlook.com. Now we go to the legal section. We have the copyright notice. The copyright notice is actually seen in a lot of our code. So I'll just go to my fighter template character right here and you can see my base game instance happens to already be open in this class, in this file. I can see fill out your copyright notice in the description page of your project settings. And this is the same for the .h file. In fact, pretty much all my files have this. Your files only won't have this if you've copied this, if it's from a plugin that you're not supposed to modify, source code, or other special cases like that. So you can see I have this string here in this comment. If I change the text in here, take one from Epic's book here. This is typically what they do in the copyright files. They say copyright and they have their date range, which let's say 2018. And we'll go to the current year, which is 2024. And we'll say shown the bro LLC all rights reserved. Something like that. That's my copyright notice. Now, when I go back into my code, it's not going to have magically changed, but we will be able to use this to alter this line. And I'll go over that in a few minutes as well. Let's finish going through the project settings. And we have the licensing terms and the privacy policy. These are more like the EULA, the EULA and things like that. So these are your actual policies that you're going to put in that when people play your game or run your project, they have to agree to these terms. I don't really have any terms, so I'm going to put in something random here, like be friendly to each other. This is a multiplayer scenario. That might be what we want. This would typically be a really long set of terms or policies. And again, I don't have anything for that, but you can write up something if you'd like, or you can have this made by a professional, someone who does something with licensing and policies. Next, we have displayed. And with this, we have the project display title and the project debug title info. So this is pretty important because this stuff is what is displayed on the window title bar. And so what this means is when I launch my project, I can actually show you this. You see how it says fighter template preview? Net mode standalone, 64 bit windows. It's like that. When we're running our executable, there will be data that appears here. And we want to fill that out with information. So we could do a few things here. We could either just write in a specific name that we want, or you could customize this as it says it can include tokens, game name, platform architecture, build configuration, or RHI name, which will be replaced with the specific text. So you can actually add these tokens in here to get this fancy title. Now for me, I would probably do something like game name. Let's do the build configuration as an example. Something like that should work. So it should display the name of the game with the build configuration there. This is the project debug title info. You can display extra data when debugging. So basically, if you're not in a shipping build, which if you don't know what that is, that's okay. Essentially, when you package your project for release, you can do it for a debug build to test things out, or you can do it for your shipping build to actually publish it and send it to people and upload it places. If it's not for shipping, then it's either some sort of debug or development build, in which case you can add extra things. So in that one, I might want to also add the platform architecture, for example. So I could say platform architecture and put a comma there. And now I will have this as my debug tile info, even if it's not the same. And actually, I'm noticing I put spaces in here. Don't do that. Don't make that same mistake I did. Game name, build configuration should not have spaces and neither should platform architecture. My bad on that one. So it should look like that. Lastly, we have the settings section here. Should window preserve aspect ratio? 
So when the window is resized, do we want to preserve it or do we want to allow it to be changed? By default, it is set to preserve and I think that's fine. Use borderless window just means that when you launch this, you won't have this actual border. It'll just be the game itself. Some games use it, others don't, it's up to you. Start in VR, pretty self-explanatory. Going to start the game in virtual reality mode. You can technically run in VR at any point using VR preview if this is a project that supports that. But in my case, this one is not, so I'm not gonna check that. We have allow window resize, which allows us to actually resize the window. So when we're in the game, can we do things like this? Allow close will actually allow us to close the window from the window prompt itself without closing the application. So for example, instead of going to my toolbar and closing something, I will have an X that I can close from there. Alternatively, you can provide the user with buttons on the screen and other things like that to get around having the close button. And then allow maximize and allow minimize are quite literally this button and this button. So do we want to allow the users to have access to those buttons and doing those actions? Once the project settings are filled out, we can test these. And to test them, we are going to need to actually package our project because a lot of these we can't see without doing that. Now, I have an entire video on packaging and what goes into that that you can check out. I'll leave the icon in the top right corner right here. We can do a very quick run through. We can go to File, Package Project. And then the platform we want to package it on, which is going to be Windows 64 bit for me. So I'll go ahead and select that right now. And then I pick where I want to put it. So I'm going to put it in community projects and I'll put it right in here. Now it's going to package and this could take some time, especially if you haven't done it before or haven't done it often. There is some cache data, so if you package more frequently, it can make it a little bit faster. Otherwise, give it some time, and once it completes, I will get back to you. The packaging is now complete, so I can go to my file explorer. I can then go to my folder. So here is my Windows No Editor. Windows No Editor is what the default name of the package is. So we're going to want to go into that. And here's my fighter template.exe. So this is the executable that we care about. Now, if I right click on this and go to properties, all my information from the project description is going to be there, right? Nope, it is not here. And that is because this executable actually launches another executable. Funnily enough, if we go into the folder with the same name as the executable fighter template, and then go to binaries, then win 64, we see another executable here, fighter template win 64 debug game.exe. And now if I am to right click on this and go to properties and then go to the details panel, you'll see that I have the UE4 fighter as the file description, which is accurate. The product name is the UE4 fighter, which is accurate. The copyright is the copyright with the Sean the bro and those years. So that is accurate. So this has more accurate information. Now, if we go to general, we'll see that the description is UE4 fighter, which is accurate. And so now we're looking a little bit better. Another thing we can do is hover over this and see the information that pops up. So we have the file description as UE4 Fighter. The company is the correct company because that says Sean the Bro, which is what we put. Now this is the debug game version of the build. As you can see, it says debug game. So it's not shipping. So if we go back to our project settings in the engine, remember where we were in the displayed section, we had the displayed title and the debug title info. In a debug game scenario, we should display the game name, platform architecture, and build configuration when it launches. So I'm launching the executable right now, and it has launched in full screen, bigger than everything else at the moment. And it's kind of hidden behind my other windows as far as recording goes. So I'm gonna click into this, and I'm gonna window this. And you can see it says fighter template, debug game, fighter template, 64 debug game. So this is good because this actually did display all the data that we told it to display in that section. Now, if we do a shipping build, we should see less than this. We shouldn't see this section right here, the debug game fighter template comma 64. Now it's also worth noting that you can launch this from either the binaries win 64 folder like we did, 
or you can come back out to the source folder and launch it here, the data will still work and be accurate. And you can see it's all right here. So either method of launching it will work, but that's where you can see that data as well. Now for the project thumbnail, which we put as Kiru here, we can open up our Epic Games launcher. Then we can go to our library and you'll see the fighter template now has a picture of Kiryu. So this is what the project thumbnail is for. Now the other things we have are the version and the ID. The ID is only for things in the marketplace, so we don't have to worry about that. That would be for if you had your project up on the marketplace, which will be covered in a later video. The version is really the same deal. It's not the version of the engine that you're on or anything like we were looking at earlier when in the details of the executable it is the version of this project. And you're not really going to be able to see that unless you have that up somewhere where there are versions listed. So that would also be useful in the marketplace, but we don't have that right now. All right, now to check out the publisher in legal information we can use the default game.ini. So this information is information that you're likely going to display to the user in one way or another. And to display it to the user, you would probably have a widget that would do that. That's how I'm going to handle it. That's how I've handled it in the past. And so you need to go to your default game.ini. And this is in the projects config file. And here is the default game.ini. It's this one right here. We can go ahead and open that up. If you can't open it up, you can actually right click on it and open with just some sort of text editor. I have Notepad++. So either way will work. Now when you're in here, you can see all the information that we set in that project settings page. And this is all accurate. It's also accurate for packaging settings and other things in this file as well. So you can always double check and make sure that this has the correct data and you can parse this data if you ever need to. That is a bit more advanced, but I will be covering it in the fighter tutorial series. So if you're interested in learning how to grab the licensing terms, the privacy policy, support, contact, homepage, and the project version number to display in your game, we are going to be covering that. So you can stay tuned for an update on that video where we grab the data from our default game, the INI, and put it as data that the users can see when playing the game. But as long as it's in this file for now, you've done everything correctly. So I'm going to close out of this. I'm going to go back to the editor. The last thing you may want to check is that all your settings variables are set correctly and that they're working. I know that my window preserve aspect ratio is accurate because I resized the window earlier. We were not using a borderless window, which is accurate because we were able to read the text that we had put in the displayed section. It did not start in VR. It did allow us to resize the window. We were able to close it and maximize and minimize. We did not check but the buttons were there, so we know that it was working as intended. Otherwise, they'd be grayed out and not usable. So there you go, guys. This is the project settings, project description section. And this is how you can fill it all out for each one of your projects that you have. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and if you did, please subscribe. It does more for myself and the channel than anything else you can do, and I just really appreciate it. I want to give a huge shout out to my YouTube membership and Patreon members and supporters. Thank you guys for all the love and support. You've kept these series and this channel going for so long due to your generosity. So thank you so much again for all of that. If you had any issues with this tutorial or any questions, you can feel free to comment on the video or join the Discord community. There is a Discord community link in the description. You can click that to get started and the community support is completely free, so I'd be happy to help you. Anyway guys, that's all I got. So thank you so much for watching. I'm Sean the Bro and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye guys.